Imagine if you're walking somewhere at night and someone asks you something precious or private like nudes in exchange of money, would you accept this offer? In the case of Tracy Edward it was yes. Hello and welcome to Crime Time Reports where we present true crime stories, solved unsolved and mysterious cases. And today we are going to discuss inside the mind of a serial killer, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, famous for its unique and delicious cuisine that is influenced by the city's German and Polish heritage, as well as its proximity to Lake Michigan. Some of the most famous foods in Milwaukee include cheese curds, bratwurst, fish fry, butter burger, frozen custard and beer. These are just a few of the many famous foods in Milwaukee, which has a vibrant culinary scene that is always evolving and expanding. Tracy Edward was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1969 and grew up in a troubled household. Edwards had a history of substance abuse and had been in trouble with the law. On the night of July 22, 1991, Edwards was walking to his girlfriend's house when Dahmer approached him and offered him money in exchange for posing for nude photographs. Edwards agreed to the offer and went with Dahmer to his apartment. Jeffrey Dahmer was born on May 21, 1960, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to Lionel and Joyce Dahmer. He was the oldest of two sons and had a relatively normal childhood until his parents' marriage began to deteriorate when he was in elementary school. His parents divorced when he was 18, and he became increasingly isolated and socially awkward. Jeffrey Dahmer had a history of psychological issues and was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder, which are both serious mental health conditions that can affect a person's ability to form healthy relationships and regulate their emotions. Tracy Edwards discovered a number of horrifying things when he arrived at Dahmer's apartment. He realized that something was seriously wrong. While he was in the apartment, Edwards saw several disturbing things, including a human head in the refrigerator, which he recognized as being freshly severed. He also saw several other body parts, including a heart and various limbs, in various stages of decomposition. Over the course of a decade, Dharma lured young men and boys to his apartment, where he would drug them, sexually assault them, and then kill them. He dismembered their bodies and disposed of their remains in various ways, including burying them, dissolving them in acid, and keeping parts of them as souvenirs. However, Tracy Edwards managed to escape from Dharma's apartment and flagged down police officers who were on patrol nearby. Edwards told the officers that Dharma had held him captive in his apartment and had tried to handcuff him. He showed the officers Dharma's apartment, where they discovered photographs of dismembered bodies and human remains, including a human head in Dharma's refrigerator. When the police arrived, they found several disturbing items, including photographs of dismembered bodies and a human head in the refrigerator. Dharma was taken into custody, and a more thorough search of his apartment uncovered additional evidence, including human remains and disturbing materials such as acid and a saw. He was eventually charged with 17 counts of murder and multiple counts of sexual assault and dismemberment. Jeffrey Dahmer's trial began on January 30, 1992, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was charged with 17 counts of murder, as well as multiple counts of sexual assault, dismemberment, and other crimes. The trial lasted two weeks and was heavily publicized, drawing intense media attention from around the world. The prosecution presented a wealth of evidence, including physical evidence found at the crime scenes, photographs, and testimony from witnesses and experts. Dharma's defense team argued that he was not guilty by reason of insanity, citing his long history of mental illness and his troubled childhood. However, the jury ultimately rejected this defense and found Dharma guilty on all counts. Dharma was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole after a minimum of 957 years. However, he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate in 1994, just two years after his conviction as the inmate was disgusted by his crimes. If you love to hear solved, unsolved and mysterious cases, do subscribe to Crime Time Reports and comment down what do you think about this event and how it would have been prevented.